For the porcelain slab industry, you have to have a little bit of everything to be successful. You have to have a background of tile, and you also have to have the background of installing large heavy objects from the granite industry. Well, today we're going to focus on one key attribute that you absolutely need to master to be successful and not lose money, measuring. We are going to take this boring, neglected, underutilized, empty canvas of a business foyer and clad it with Decton 8mm slabs. The walls are in pretty bad shape after being painted multiple times over the years. Since painted surfaces are not suitable substrate for panels, I will need to decide if I have to replace or can I cover them with concrete board. I first begin by checking the wall for flatness. I'm looking for eighth of an inch variance over 10 feet. If the wall goes beyond that tolerance, I'll have to tear out the sheetrock and replace it with concrete board. Thankfully, this wall was built pretty flat. So Q80's construction montage is I attach and cover it over with half inch concrete board. Now that our wall is prepped and ready for installation, it's time to get final measurements. Today we're going to use the Laser Products LT 2D 3D digital system to gather our measurements and make modifications of those measurements to be as close as possible to our final product. The key to this plan is the giant laser. It was invented by the noted Cambridge physicist Dr. Parsons. Therefore, we shall call it the Allen Parsons Project. My first position in the stone industry was as a measure technician. I would measure everything with wood stick templates. Now, depending on who you talk to, there are tons of great machines out there for the industry. This video is not designed to tell you which machine to go out and buy. It's merely to be used as a teaching aid so that you can speed up your measuring process to allow you to have a successful installation with as few corrections as needed. On a personal note, I did own a 2D 3D for many years. It was a solid machine and was easy to use, had low maintenance, and had incredible functionality. Laser Products is currently selling their new models at just over $17,000. Now who the hell is gonna buy that Are you joking? This is a lie, I'm selling hundreds of these, it's on back order. Get the out of here. No, I cannot. The LT 2D 3D is used heavily in the countertop industry and allows for measurements to be digitally gathered from up to 200 feet away. It can measure just about any horizontal or vertical surface with accuracy up to 1 16th of an inch. Let's go ahead and set it up. Begin laser ignition sequence. Begin laser ignition! <laughs> Set up the tripod in a central position that allows for visibility to as much area as possible. Open up the case and carefully set the laser head in the pin slot and tighten down. Then bring out the tablet and connect via the pinhole. My habit from years ago was to turn the laser on first and then connect the USB cable to the tablet before opening the LT software. Just like any project, communication with your customer to set the proper expectations is key. So for us on this project, we've discussed with the customer installing four panels, two above, two below, with a single T intersection for our joints. So when we gather our measurements, we're going to make sure to offset between each of those panels exactly the amount of what we anticipate our joints to become on installation day. This should allow us to be able to walk in put the thin set on the wall and get those panels in place as quickly as possible. One thing to take into consideration while you gather your measurements is how changes of plane will affect them. Now the industry recommends an eighth of an inch to be offset or to basically create space so that walls can fluctuate, move, contract and expand as the weather or temperature changes. This is a great tip to have because if you make your panels too tight, you may also restrict your ability to get the panel into place. Gotcha. Another area to be very conscious of as you make offsets and adjustments in your measurements is the change of plane at the ceiling. 
Now, for some installers in the industry, they will do as much as a quarter inch of space from the top of the ceiling to the top of their panel. Whatever it is that you decide to do, make sure you communicate this with your customer because it would be terrible for you to finish up a project only to have that designer or homeowner come in and be upset at the amount of silicone you've had to put 25 feet up in the air. Begin by establishing the plane you are shooting. I get the left wall, then the right, and then a dot at the ceiling. By pushing start, new line, I can begin shooting around the room. As you shoot around the walls, it is important to take measurements every four to 10 inches, depending on the bows in the wall. This allows for a clean scribed cut if you are using a water jet. When you approach corners, slow down and bring the increments you shoot to a tighter amount of less than half an inch. For the floor, I shoot two points per tile right at the edge so that I can catch any deviation between the flooring to make sure that the previous installer was honest in how well he put it together. I normally utilize a laser level to establish a plumb and level line in the drawing. This allows you to have a correct orientation when you make adjustments and add seams. You can do the same thing by drawing a plumb and level line with a four foot level. Shoot two points on each line, creating an X and Y axis on your drawing. Remember too, you can be accurate even with outlets. And in this case, having a two inch by three and a half inch outlet is as easy as drawing single lines around the opening. Don't get too excited to forget to save. Do so by clicking File and Save. Look for the check mark to make sure it's saved correctly. Lastly, take your tape measure and double check your measurements. You don't want to leave the job site with missed or inaccurate shots. A measure tech who doesn't double check is like a shot from a Star Wars Stormtrooper. They always miss. With our saved file, we can now make adjustments to send it to production. So as we discussed earlier in the video, on the left and right wall, we're gonna bring those measurements in by an eighth of an inch. From the ceiling, we're gonna come down a quarter of an inch. And from the floor, we'll raise that line up one eighth of an inch. To adjust an entire section at once, click Draw, then Offset, and choose Offset Scrapped Wall. Enter the amount you want to offset and click the box to make sure the old measurements are automatically deleted. Then highlight the desired section and click the direction you want to offset towards. After handling all needed sides, we need to make sure the new measurements are properly connected. Click Sharp Fillet and zoom in on the corners. Click the two lines you want to connect together. After handling all adjusted lines and corners, you should have your square footage showing in the bottom right. At this point, our wall is properly sized and connected together. However, we need to add our grout joints. Press rotate and click the horizontal line we drew earlier. Locate the drop in button on the far right and open the marks section, selecting 20 line. I've decided to find absolute center of the ceiling section. So I drop the 20 line on the top right corner. Next, determine what is the dead center point between the two corners and then press offset. Enter the measurement and click the 20 line. Now, click the direction you want to offset. At this point, find the extend function. Click the bottom line directly below the centered 20 line. The laser product software does have some common sense built into it. By selecting a new 20 line and rotating it 90 degrees, we can click anywhere in the middle of our existing grout joint and that 20 line will be dropped dead center, establishing our X and Y axis. Merely extend that center line to the left wall and the right wall, and you have dead center across all four quadrants. Oh my God! Wow! I know, right? At this point, we can create the needed space between panels for the grout joints. ANSI A108 standards for large format tile and panels establishes that the minimum size for your grout joint needs to be 1 8 of an inch. So what I'm going to do is offset both directions from my center line a 16th. And with those two offsets combined, I will have established my minimum eighth of an inch grout joint. Sharp fillet the lines together to create four distinct areas. Then select edit and choose erase segment to erase the lines from the wall edge that connects the areas together. To move the panels apart for ease of reading, choose slab layout, highlight the rectangle you want to move, 
and then offset whatever distance looks best to you. Draw your dimensions, label your drawings, save, and you are good to go. Your digital dimensions are now ready to go into production. You can either email them to your local fabricator or deliver via thumb drive. Whatever fabricator you choose, make sure that their CNC equipment can properly handle the Decton or porcelain slabs that you might be working with. It would be a shame for you to lose such an expensive piece of material because of a fabricator not knowing how to properly calibrate their equipment. In our next video, we'll go into the CNC production capabilities required to properly facilitate installation of properly cut pieces. Make sure you like and subscribe to be notified when that video gets posted along with the many others that we have in production at this time. We thank you for watching and as always, you're not a pro unless you know.